Hi there, my name's Simon Wearmouth. I'm a partner in the agricultural business consultancy team in Norwich and uh, one of Brown & Co's auctioneering team, uh, primarily concentrating in the east of England. Hello, I'm George Watchall, I'm a divisional partner and auctioneer for Brown & Co based in our St. Neots office uh, in Bedfordshire, um, primarily operating in the Midland counties and um, Western counties. George, um, it's been a cracking year for us uh, this last 12 months and we've had a, a, a pretty record number of sales. Do you, do you want to give us a bit of a summary? Yeah, absolutely. I think the market, well, the market for second-hand machinery, particularly if it's well-maintained and low-houred, has been at an all-time high. I think the primary reasons behind this is that the cost of new machinery keeps rising. There's a lack of availability of new uh, new machinery on the market and the lead times in sourcing those uh, keep being extended. Um, certainly from what we've seen in 2021 on the on-site sales, I think we've conducted about 22 on-farm sales. These started with online timed auctions uh, at the beginning of the year because we were in the second lockdown uh, and we reverted back to the more conventional uh, method being back on farm from June onwards. We've travelled the country in 2021 from Devon to as far north as North Yorkshire, uh, then as far west from Shropshire to across to Norfolk. Um, we've sold circa five and a half thousand lots, uh, equating to a total machinery value of just over eight million. Um, have you found the online timed auctions, Simon? Well, for the, the mixture of sales that I've been doing both on site and online, I've found that uh, trade has been brisk throughout. I mean, the, the whole online timed auction, we've been running those for the last seven years on uh, on a quarterly basis. It was brought about by um, farmers and clients ringing us asking whether they could uh, enter lots into uh, on site sales and where we didn't have an on site sale within their vicinity in the near future. Um, we weren't we weren't able to provide that service, so effectively we created a quarterly national collective. And we we've sold lots from the Highlands of Scotland down to Bude in Cornwall, all over Norfolk and right through to Shropshire and into Wales. So it, it's it's worked well. Um, we've been doing it as I say for seven years. It's been widely adopted, and people are getting used to uh, that method of uh, selling kit. Works on a no, no sale, no fee basis. Um, and uh, the number of registered buyers is is growing all the time. So yeah, it, it's worked well. And in terms of the the on-site sales, we've had exactly the same as experience as you, George. Really brisk trade. Um, lots of buyers out there. Uh, for the first time, I think in my career, I'm seeing um, much many more lots uh, going to farmer buyers rather than the trade. The farmer buyers are in there comp competing fiercely with the trade purely for the reasons you say in respect of long lead times on um, on new kit and the inability to source other machinery. Absolutely. And how are you finding uh, the export trade, Simon, since um, since the delivery of Brexit? Mm. Yeah, I know you and I have had several discussions on this over the last 12 months or more. And I think uh, the whole phytosanitary certificates the difficulties and lack of understanding at ports, where even the, some of the officials don't seem to understand the rules, creating a lot of difficulty. It has had a big effect on uh, export trade, um, and only the people who are really well organised are still buying and exporting, primarily to Eastern Europe, I would have said. But uh, luckily, the domestic trade is so brisk that uh, it's it's not having a noticeable effect at all on 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 trade price prices. Are you finding the same, George? Absolutely. I mean, when Brexit initially hit, um, there was a fear that the export trade was going to completely go, and I think you know people were a bit apprehensive about the increased paperwork and getting the phytosanitary certificate. Um, however, we've seen it bounce back a little. You know, with the on-site sales that we had towards the latter half of the year, we were selling lots in. Uh, primarily across again to Eastern Europe, um, but also we had a few lots uh, go as far as uh, as far as Egypt. Yeah, I think the uh, one, one of the main strengths that we found recently, um, and we've been doing this for the last couple of years, would be that all of our on-site sales are live streamed as well. 
So every lot in, in every auction that we have held would be available on a global market. So someone can sit wherever they would like in the world and still be able to bid our sales. And we've found that this has had a really strong effect on our, our pricing. Um, and we're able to get what were the clearance rates we're achieving on those stats, George? There was 93% um, for on-site sales in 2021. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And uh, that includes some enters lots as well with some uh, relatively high reserves. So I think that's uh, a testament to the the dedicated team of auctioneers that we've got. Absolutely. And like I say, the geographic spread and the changes that are probably facing the industry at the moment is probably, uh, should I say, a service that we're going to see more on farm delivery of in the next um, in the next 12 months um it was cert certainly with the people that i'm speaking to um you know are thinking that changes are ahead yeah without a doubt and i think not only are we able to offer on-site and online timed auctions but we're also able to offer the full asset valuation service with a full rics registered team of valuers for whatever purpose that you're looking to ascertain the value of those assets we're able to provide that service and assist in every way absolutely i think you know the main the main point here is that when you're doing auctions you've only got one chance to sell it so pick the right team and sell it well thanks very much for your time and uh, listening to what we've got to say you can find both of mine and george's contact details on the on brown-co.com website um, and we look forward to speaking to you soon if you would uh, like to get in touch